Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescaserigs.com. Another double header break coming your way. 2021 Topps Chrome Platinum Anniversary featuring a case of Hobby and a case of Light. 28 boxes total, a lot of fun stuff. Now, if you bought a full spot, you got a chance to win a full spot. So big thanks to that group right there. Two out of the eight spots are gonna win full spots. That's nice. So. There'll be two dice rolls here. One for this. The second dice will be for uh, to match you up with the team. And maybe if we have to do any randomized, there'll be a third dice roll at the end. But very good odds here. Top two after five. Four and a one five times. One, two, three, four. And good luck. Fingers crossed. Fifth and final time. Gary and David, congrats to you. Extra spots going your way. Thanks for buying those full spots. So you got a rooftop next to your name right there letting you know that you won full spots. So now we got 30 spots total. Let's gather everyone's names again. All 30 teams are in. Now let's randomize you a team. Let's randomize both of those lists six and a five 11 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11th and final time. Six and a five, 11 times for the teams. One, two, three, four. And once more, right? 11th and final time. Yes, 11th and final time. Good luck. Fingers crossed. <clears throat> we got the uh, Twins down to the Yankees. So here's how it shakes out for you, ladies and gentlemen. Pinard with the Twins. Stephen K, you got my Dodgers. Joe P with the Red Sox. Gary with the Guardians. Jeff with the Astros. Rick with the Cubs. Harry with the Padres. Peter with the Phillies. Stephen K with the Giants. Grant with the Rockies, Gary with the Brew Crew, David with the White Sox, Joe P with the Nationals, Kenneth with the Angels, Joe with the Cardinals, Raymond with the Royals, Chris with the Mets, Martin with the Reds, Joe P with the Rangers, Chad with the Marlins, Adam with the Blue Jays, David with the Mariners, Grant with the Braves, Kenneth with the Pirates, Peter with the O's, Chad with the Diamondbacks, David with the Rays and A's, Martin with the Tigers, and Gary with the Yankees. sort by team alphabetically and we're going to pause the video when we come back we're going to see if there's any trades and then we will have the break stick around we'll see you on the other side all right welcome back everybody look at this we got a deal done so um ray is out of the royal spot into the diamondback spot we'll put a t here for trade and Chad is out of the Diamondback spot and into the Royals spot. So let's see who draws. Uh, let's see who draws first blood in this, like uh, like Rambo. They drew first blood. All right. Well, kick back and relax. This is going to be a long one. We're, let's do the light box first. Now the light is uh, unique because it has those. Um, the black and white mini diamond parallels. Autographs are few and far between. Some cases won't have an autograph. Last break of this we did, we did see two. And if they're if we do see an autograph, it's I think it's I think they're all pink parallels, so they should be out of 15. So they'll be low numbers. And then of course, Hobby has an autograph per box. All right, good luck, everybody. Here's the final printout, hot off the presses. Thanks for hanging with me on a Tuesday. Got the um, MLB All-Star Game on in the background. On a, uh, off of a couple home runs, 
the AL now leading 3-2 over the NL. We did, we do have, I guess, suppose we're a few innings in the game now. I suppose I should close this poll. We posted a poll in the chat, and according to the chat, 54%, a lot of votes, so almost 50 votes, 40, 54% saying the AL will win this one. They are, they are currently leading right now. roll and of course we'll do a uh, of course we'll do a um, a recap at the end of the video how many breaks took place not not too many tonight but if you look at the schedule you can see a full list of the of everything we've done Now, ladies and gentlemen, this, this break is part of tonight's break credit promo. We, we have to do a couple more breaks, a couple fillers to knock out some main breaks. And um, then we can give away a bunch of money tonight, I hope. Now, I know this is a long break, but play, take this time to, uh, to start working on some, other, uh, uh, some of those break credit breaks just so we don't lose momentum after this long break right here. So I would appreciate if you get your spots, uh, if, you, if you keep getting your spots over the course of this break. All right, good luck everybody. And I, I wanna say all card ship in this. Yep, all card ship. It's Yogi Berra, those wave parallels not numbered, still nice. These are the, uh, these are the exclusives, those black and whites. And of course, these are facsimile autographs. Nice, it's a cool parallel. I like it. Ooh, what is this? Oh, blue parallel. Nice, Joey Gallo to 199. Dexter Fowler. I like these. These X Fractor or checkerboard cards are not numbered, but still looks nice. Everything ships. Good luck, everybody. Next box, box two. Um, I have a little financial interest in this uh, all-star game here. I'm into that kind of thing. Uh, I, I needed a, something a little spicy, so I went, I went National League minus one and a half runs at plus 175. They're down a run. I need them to win by two. Still a lot of game left. All right, next light box. Joey Gallo. Oh, we got another blue parallel here. Joe Morgan popping. 64 out of 199. Big red machine. Martin with the red legs. <clears throat> Dylan Carlson. 
Rookie card, Joe P. with the Cardinals. Alex Colomay. There's Chris Taylor. I feel like I, as soon as I turn these around, right side up, it'll go backwards like this again. Justice Sheffield. All right, next box. Also, Jason Jaspi is live on Instagram right now. <clears throat> Instagram live at Jaspi's Breaks. He's got hit packs and personal boxes. Instagram live at Jaspi's Breaks. So if you don't feel like hanging out with me here, you can get a personal box over there. Any early thoughts on uh, All Star MVP? I guess uh, I guess John Carlos Stanton, one for two with a two run homer, would so far be uh, maybe the, the the leading candidate. Is Otani going to pitch in this? Anyone know? If, if, if the AL manager is, is going to have Otani, he's hitting. You've got to see him pitch, right? Martin says no on Otani pitching time. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, what? Scott Pesednik, remember him? Corey Seager, still Dodgers edition here, refractor. Got a red parallel back there. And it's 99 out of 100, 100 Charlie Blackman. That'll be for the Rockies. or the rookies. Apparently, uh, Royals unlikely to trade Zach Granke. Royals release uh, Roman Quinn, Brad Peacock. Oh yeah, Rex mentioned this earlier. Steven Souza Jr. announced his retirement. Diamondbacks and their draft pick Drew Jones, Andrew Jones's kid, agreeing to terms. Poor Chris Sale got got came back from a rib injury, and then a comebacker hits him in the pinky, undergoes finger surgery, could still return this season. Rangers and Kumar Rocker agree to terms. Ah, because Otani's next card scheduled Friday. Right, that makes sense. There should be a retired players game as well as an all star event. Didn't they used to have an old timers game? Or is that now? Maybe that's the celebrity softball game. Maybe some of the old retired players end up in there, Gilo. 
<clears throat> All right, next box. Noma, it's Red Sox edition. And we have a 10 out of 10. Roger Clemens, nice. Boston Red Sox, Joe Pizzle. I think you got the anniversary logo in the background. A little step and repeat. Background and a 10 out of 10. Nice rocket, Roger Clemens. Remember, this is the light edition, so autographs are going to be few and far between. But look at this. Is that an auto? It is. Nice one, too. Greg Maddox, Braves edition. That's going to go to Grant and the Braves. Eleven out of fifteen. Nice, the professor. Looking very, very professorly there. All right, next box. How was the home run derby? Didn't get to watch. It turned out to be pretty exciting. I think. Juan Soto beating uh, beating the youngster Julio. I guess they're both young. Uh, beating Julio Rodriguez. Julio Rodriguez had had thirty what thirty two home runs in the first round. Pretty crazy. Also, kind of crazy to think that Julio Rodriguez is twenty one years old in his first full season. Um, Juan Soto is only two years older, but it seems like he's been in the league forever. He kind of has been. He, he's, he's a he, he's a he's a grizzled veteran now at this point. Yeah, Gilo can see Granky wanting to stay in KC. He knows where he's at his career. Just finished at home. Uh, Zach Granky, I think, has a. I don't know what his post playing career, what, what he intends to do, but he could be, he could be a GM, someday. Maybe he'll end up in someone's front office. Yeah, Juan, uh, Julio is the man, Chad Daw is saying. He's a Mariners guy. Soto needs to team up with in Seattle. If it only it was Juan Soto's choice. It's not. Although, I guess he could be a free agent. And end up as a free agent. And then uh, you can take a look around the league. See... see uh, where he'd want to be. All right, good luck. Stephen K, what's going on, man? Looking for a Will Clark autograph. That'd be cool. Will the Thrill. 183 out of 199. There's Jim Palmer. I did not see any of the Homer and Derby X they did in London. Oh, that sounds interesting. Maybe Soto just doesn't like living in D.C.? Maybe. Although, I think that's... I, I think the... You know, where someone lives, I think, is a little overrated when people factor that in. Because these professional athletes, all of them are rich. And they're li probably they're all living in the best neighborhood, so... Of any city. All right, next box.
Yeah, if you're signing for 500 million, get you a state with no income tax. All right, yeah, half, half your gains will be taxed in that state, so it's a big chunk of your salary. Although, at the $500 million level, it might not matter that much. Giannis is a good example, Tim saying he's happy in Milwaukee. Soto wants something like that. I don't know. I'll bet you if uh, if Giannis didn't have such a good team and a good front office around him, reinvesting in the team, there's Nico Horner to 100, and I'll bet Giannis would want out of Milwaukee too. I don't think it's I don't think it's location at all. I mean, Juan Soto's pretty much said it. The you know, I don't. I think he wants to play playoff baseball. The Nationals aren't going to give him that at the moment. You know, the ownership situation is in flux. So who knows what the what the new owners are going to want to do with the Nationals and what direction they go? What if, what if they end up being being cheap penny pinching owners? You know, and they don't reinvest in the team, and he's stuck there for however long. You know, so there's a lot of uncertainty at his workplace. So why does he, you know, why would why would he sign like a such a long term deal, such an uncertain, you know, with so many so much uncertainty around there? Giannis just looks happy. Well, I mean, Giannis is happy because the Bucks ownership invested in the team. He won a championship, you know, and they're they're continuing to improve that team. Of course, he'd be happy. You think Jared Goff's living off of 8 Mile, Garrett? No way. Jared Goff is living in some whatever the fancy suburb is out there. I would turn down 15 years, 500 million or 440 million if if you know, if I wasn't I mean, I think he wants to win. He wants to try to win championships. And sometimes that's worth more than more than as a salary. And if you if you really break it down too, they were only going to get he was only going to get uh 29 only, but 29 million dollars a year, which is the average annual value is far lower than a lot of the top tier players. I mean, the thing is, Juan Soto knows he's going to get paid by somebody, and if that's going to be the case, why not try to get paid by a team that's going to be, you know, in the playoffs where he can, you know, showcase his talents on that stage. Here's Glaber Day, Glaber Torres, 83 out of 99. Yeah, well, then he's also a Scott Boris client too. <laughs> Tommy John. Well, he's saying no. Listen, he's going to get that kind of money, Tim. That's not the issue. He's saying no to the Nationals. He'll get that money elsewhere. That's not a problem. It's not like, you know, it's not like he's not going to get a deal close to that. Or maybe even more than that. Yeah. 
I mean, if you're a player of Juan Soto's caliber, you're not, you're not, you're not just blindly taking the first first offer that you get. You have you have a lot of power, a lot of leverage. You and me, average guys like us, you know, we're like, of course we take that contract right away, but that's that's different. You gotta you gotta put yourself in the mind of a of a ball player. Juan Soto's gonna gonna get that money. Well, I told you why I say no to the Nationals because they're a rebuilding team. You gotta pay attention, Tim. They're a rebuilding team. I don't think they're gonna be in the playoffs anytime soon. And the team is for sale, so there's a lot of ownership question marks as well. Well, that seems to be a bit of a trend these days, Gilo. Uh, Gilo would take a shorter contract with a higher average annual value. I kind of would too, and a contender. I would too. You know, there are teams that, you know, there are teams that could probably pay him forty million dollars a year for like, you know, three or four years. You know, and then Juan Soto can take another bite at the free agent apple again. And that's kind of what the sort of what the Mets did with uh, Max Scherzer, thirty six out of seventy five Garrett Anderson. I, I feel like you kind of see that variations of that here and there. There's Kenneth with the Angels. That way, both team and player aren't locked into a long term deal. True. Yeah. Soto is unique because he's 23. Martin's pointing out if he signs a 10, 15 year deal, it doesn't really doesn't age that that bad because of his youth. Unless yeah, unless the you know the crazy injury. But but I could see Juan Soto being like if I'm that young, I could see from the team perspective the team wants to wants to lock up Juan Soto for as long as possible. That Ryan Mountcastle, by the way, goes to Peter and the Orioles. The ownership wants to lock a player like him up as long as possible. Juan Soto, knowing that he's 23, is being like, hey, if I could get a bite of the free agent apple a few times in my career, you know, that by the end of his career, I mean, he can, he can make a boatload of money. to see who thinks Juan Soto gets traded by the summer deadline or or do you think it's going to be an off-season deal I don't know how, how quickly the how fast the wheels are moving on the Juan Soto trade train Yeah, 10, 15 year deal is, is, is pretty long. Tim thinks he's gonna take an eight, 12 year deal somewhere he wants to go. Uh, maybe, I don't know, he, he might be young enough to even take a shorter deal and then take a crack at the free agent apple again. And you know what? I don't think LeBron has ever demanded a trade, right? Twenty-eight 
24 out of 50, Aaron Hicks. Who's been uh who's been doing pretty well lately? I think the Yankees were looking for were at one point looking for uh, a little outfield help. Because Aaron Hicks mm, not been playing that well, but he's been heating up a little bit, so the Yankees may have tabled that. Unless they can get Juan Soto. Well, according to MLBTradeRumors.com, writer Steven Adams, Steve Adams, headline, looking for a match in a Juan Soto trade. So he writes, we're only six weeks removed from Nat, uh, Nats general manager Mike Rizzo publicly declaring that he had no intention of trading star outfielder Juan Soto. Rizzo's comments seemed earnest, both at the time and even in light of recent reports, as the organization clearly had every intention of trying to extend the 23-year-old and build around him long term. The Nationals reportedly offered Soto a guaranteed $440 million contract recently, which he rebuffed, presumably due to a combination of factors. Firstly, the 15-year uh, term of the deal left Soto's $29.33 million annual average value well shy of the rate at which the game's brightest stars are paid. Whatever the size of the guarantee, Soto is going to be set for generations, but as we saw with Aaron Judge and the Yankees, there's a symbolic element to being paid at rates commensurate to that of the Mike Trouts and Garrett Coles of the game. It also can't help them Nats are admired in a rebuild that leaves their, uh, their near-term outlook bleak even with Soto. Slugger recently reported, told reports after getting a taste of winning in 2019, he wants more, and it looks unlikely in D.C. that's going to happen any time in the future. And with the team reportedly up for sale, Soto doesn't know who's going to be signing the checks, what their long-term vision will be, and even who will be building future rosters. Right? GM might be gone, too, with new ownership. Uh, I'll continue the article after this box. We've got a blue parallel coming up. 40 out of 199. Blue Sal Perez. Nice. Royals chat with KC. 40 out of All right, next box. A talent, let's continue with the with the article. A talent of this magnitude hasn't hit the trade market this early in his career and with this much of a track record since the then Florida Marlins who sent Miguel Cabrera to the Tigers at the 2007 winter meetings for a six player package headlined by Cameron Mabin and Andrew Miller. Both Mabin and Miller uh, had been top 10 selections in the two prior drafts, and both were ranked inside Baseball America's top 10 overall prospects in MLB at the time. And yet even that comparison may fall shy. Heading into his age 25 season at the time of the trade, Cabrera was legitimately amazing. A perennial 300-plus hitter, easy 30-homer power, WRC plus 39% better than the league average. Soto, however, will be 24 for the entirety of the 2023 season. And by measure of WRC plus He's been 55% better than the average hitter to that point in his career. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, we shouldn't look to the Cabrera deal as a concrete template, but it's the closest general barometer of how painful it might be to acquire a talent of Soto's caliber at this juncture of his career. Because Soto is such an elite talent, it stands to reason that virtually every team in baseball will at least be checking in. And since he's controlled so far beyond the current season, fans shouldn't expect that only clear-cut buyers will be in the market for him. Teams like the Rangers, Cubs might not be in the playoff chase this year, but you can bet they'll be getting a feel for what it might cost them to get, uh, to get Soto. The best fits for Soto are going to be teams with strong far systems, be they, be, uh, be they balanced or deep or top-heavy with a few star names up front. Et cetera, et cetera. 
So we'll see. There's a 90 out of 100, Marco Gonzalez for the M's. David M with the M's. All right, next box. What's up, Brandon? Doing well, doing well. In the middle of this double header break, finishing up the last handful of boxes of light, and then we'll get into a case of hobby. Talking about Juan Soto, too. Take the A's, I'm reading an article from MLBTradeRumors.com. Yeah, could could I mean every every team is pretty much in the mix, right? I think that might be Marlins. Are you talking in the visor? Is that Marlins band in the background behind home plate? What about teams nearing the end of a rebuild cycle? Could the Orioles do something? Ooh. Right? Orioles actually looking good with some of the youngsters. They've got enough enough to part part ways with some young names and still keep a core of Rushman, Cedric Mullins, Austin Hayes, among others. You know, their payroll's pretty low. They can easily pay Juan Soto. Tigers, maybe, Cubs. Rays, Guardians, D-backs, Twins, Rockies. I'm just reading off the MLB trade rumor speculation here. Best fits in no particular order. The writer is saying uh, Padres, Dodgers, Yankees, Rangers, Blue Jays, Mets, Mariners, Red Sox, Cardinals, Giants. Here, I'll link the article in the chat. It's an interesting read. All right, next box. Here's Victor Robles, 62 out of 70, Nationals. Yeah, well, Chad Daw was saying, uh, you know, was saying uh, he would love to see Soto running around next to Julio Rodriguez. Yeah, so best fits half the league, it's true. I mean... One, two, not half a league, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten teams. Third of the league. The thing is, that's how great Soto is, that that he can be he could be a fit anywhere. I feel like every single GM has reached out to you know the Nationals front office for sure. But I think that's kind of the point, you know? Any team would try to figure out a way, hey, is this possible? Every front office in baseball is thinking, could we try? What, what would it take? You know, they kind of, they're at least thinking about it. How far they get in the process, who knows? But every ball club's thinking about it. Right, Gila, every team working on that perfect PowerPoint presentation. Getting those overhead projector slides ready. Remember those? Brandon saying, as much as I'd hate it, maybe Giants in consideration. Yeah, Farhan has 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 rebuilt that Giants team really well. Yeah, I mean, all, all the big clubs probably in the mix. Any playoff teams thinking about it?
Didn't the Knicks do that for LeBron? I think so. I feel like there's an old story about how Dolan, the owner of the Knicks, had put together some sort of presentation to try to get D. Wade and LeBron to to New York. But I think the old the at least the rumor goes that it was like really it was a really cheesy like thing and it and it didn't really work or something like that. There's Jordan Yamamoto for the Mets. That's out of uh, 70 for Chris. Yeah, you would think, Brandon, that 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 the Nationals are asking for the moon for for anybody. Martin saying, "I don't see. I don't see how you can say who the best fit is without Soto making it clear what his plan is. Does he have the number, length for an extension?" He's determined at the market that only contenders fit. But like I was saying before, I don't think, I don't think, well, yeah, I don't know what Scott Boris is thinking, but I want to say, it's kind of crazy to say it like this, but I don't think money is, is the issue. If he wants to go or, you know, like every, every team's going to pay him, you know, it's not like there's a wide gap in valuation for Juan Soto. I think everyone knows that he's going to be one of the you know, top five paid players in baseball just on youth and talent alone. So, I don't know. We'll see. Brandon saying, if you're the Dodgers, you give up Lux, Cartaya, Miller, and Grove. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it would take more than that, but yeah, that'd be nice. I I'd, I'd do it. Although they already have keeper, I suppose. I mean, they could carry two catchers, right? Cartaya and put one of them at DH or move one of them to first base or something like that. Yeah, if I'm the Yankees, I think I'd give up Jason Dominguez too. You know. You know, yeah, exactly. You know what you have with, with Juan Soto right now. Jason Dominguez still a question mark. 187 out of 199, Jackie Bradley Jr., Brew Crew. Gary. Two boxes to go. Yeah, I agree, um, Chad. It'd be nice to see maybe one more, one more pink auto out of out, out of fifteen. Hmm, yeah, maybe Cartai can be moved in. Yeah, it's true. Dodgers did get another catcher, another catcher out of Louisville. In fact, Henry Davis's backup, the the Pirates catcher, Pirates prospect. And also a former school of Will Smith, I want to say. So uh, Louisville seems to be a, 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 a catcher factor. Exactly, Rex. That's exactly what we've been saying. And we're on the same page. Yeah, that part, that part is, is well established. Now, where, do, where, where does he go? I mean, every team could want him. 
I get. Uh, I'll ask the question again. Um, does does everyone think that a deal gets done for Juan Soto by the trading deadline, which is the end of August? I want to say. Does that happen by then, or does it not? Yeah, I agree, Mar. My, my my thinking is like any team that unloads a huge prospect haul for him, you know, probably has a good indication, you know, from player and agent that you know that that he's in T he is willing to sign an extension of some sort. Whether it's a lot of years or whether it's a higher average annual value, something that you know you're gonna get him for longer than just a year and a half. There's Dalton Jeffries, 31 out of 199 for the A's, David. Brandon doesn't think the deal's gonna happen at the deadline. Yeah, even though ESPN square, he counts to. I know as much as ESPN. I could give you the same lukewarm takes. But yeah, ESPN squares, he's get deals dealt at the deadline. Yeah, I don't know. But Brandon thinking that's it's gonna be a winner winter meeting sort of deal. Gila wouldn't be surprised if it happens by the deadline, but he personally doesn't think it's going to happen. Martin saying, I don't think it'll happen this year. Nats are going to go through free and try to show them that they are going to be rebuilt soon. All right, that, that, that's an interesting take. Yeah, because if if the... That, that's an interesting take. I've, I've heard that perspective too because there, because people are saying, listen, if, if you're trying to sell the team, right, to a prospective owner like the Nationals are doing, then what if, you're, what if you can be like, what if you can be like, hey, we got Juan Soto locked up for... 10, 10 to 15 years or something like that. Could be interesting. All right, well, at the bottom of the sixth, AL is still leading by a run. Go NL. Gila, didn't didn't you make that KD joke yesterday already? Seventy-one out of one hundred. Monty Harrison for the fish. Chad with the Marlins. You gotta do it for your fans, Gilo. That day—that's the feedback we get, Gilo. They're just like, "Yeah, we don't—we come to the stream for Gilo's Gilo's jokes." I like your confidence, though. I like how you thought, man, that, that is so funny that I'm going to drop that joke again today. All right. Hobby edition. Now, we're going to get a little more action because there's one autograph a box. So we're going to see 12 autos by the end of this, plus some other parallels. Good luck, everybody. Martin was saying, well, the value isn't going to change between now and December. His money isn't the issue. No harm in waiting. Right, uh, unless they, uh, 
unless they get overwhelmed by by an offer, I guess that's kind of what Nat's front o- front office are fishing a little bit, fishing for possibly a Godfather offer, an offer they they can't refuse. I know, Tim. You are here a lot, chiming in. Trust me, I'm aware. Oh, the hit packs. Ryroni. The hit packs on Insta were awesome. Nice. Are they all sold out? Jason was doing some giveaways over there, too. I saw a big 16 by 20 blue ink auto, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Those hit packs are pretty fun, pretty strong. Oh. And Ellis got runners on first and second. Let's go, National League. Come on, Garrett Cooper. I didn't realize Garrett Cooper was an all-star. Good for him. Garrett Cooper, a local boy, Garrett Cooper. He, he was born in Torrance, which is the next city down here. There's Johnny Damon. Red Sox, that's going to go to Joe Pizzle. Went to, went to a junior college out here before transferring and making it to the big leagues. 21 out of 70. Ooh, right, right, right. Those We put another twist on those hit packs. There's also chaser tickets that you can get. They can end up chasing those... Uh, the, uh, the top tier hits, which are a lot of fun. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, we wouldn't do that. That doesn't make sense, Brandon. Uh, 12 out of 100, Xander Bogarts. Another Red Sox for Joe Pizzle. We've got a 47 out of 99, Paul O'Neill. Gary with the Yankees. A few, I think, right? I think Joe P won a few spots. He's got the Red Sox. He's got the Cardinals. He's got the Rangers. He's got the Nationals. So the two fillers that he was in were... Uh, worked out. <laughs> right, Brandon. That wouldn't make sense at all. Thankfully, we're not stupid. <laughs> We've been doing this for a minute or two. Right, yeah. Joe P. winning spots, Rex? I don't know. That must mean somewhere else in the world. It's like there's probably some sort of weird butterfly effect where where like a bunch of baby pandas died or something like that. Angel's not getting wings. 
as the case may be. Things are being turned upside down somewhere. We're at the 56 minute mark. We got about another another hour to go. Yeah. Or or he's just making deals deals with the devil. Rex, that's a possibility too. Who knows? Who knows what what's what sacrifices Joe P has made. Maybe uh, perhaps drinking the blood of a unicorn or something like that, like uh, like Voldemort. And we've got a Bruce Suter. I don't know why Bruce was flipped around, but maybe that's a variation. I don't know. And here's Key Brian Hayes, Pirates Kenneth, with the rookie base card. And for the fish, we got Lewin uh, Diaz, rookie autograph for Chad Daw and the Marlins, winning that spot in the filler, getting randomized. The Mar Marlins, that is. He's a Mariners fan. I'm getting the Lewin Diaz autograph. Behind Belly is Joey Gallo, 108 out of 199. Joe P with the Rangers. Shane Green. I like that Trevino was mic'd up during his at-bat, just chatting during the at-bat. That's awesome. Yeah, was that Gallo's slash line right there? 108, 199. Two hundred. Box. All 
And we got Jim Cat Cot Cat Cot Twins. That'll be for Kennard and Minnesota. He's a, he's an announcer right now. Been an announcer for a while, I think. Sometimes puts his foot in his mouth. I want to say. Sixteen out of seventy-five, Leody Tavares. That'll be for the Rangers, Joe Pizzle. Got a three out of twenty-five, Adrian Beltre, and another parallel back to back. So here's Beltre for Joe P. That's three out of twenty-five. Nice little number there. And I think. It's probably an extra parallel for us here. Joe Morgan, big red machine, Martin in the Reds. It's 89 out of 199. I'll take it. There's Brad Keller back here. Next box. Should we have uh, Gilo's thinking CJ Crone should have been an all star starter? Hey, he could have. I wonder if they. They probably asked him for to, to do home run derby, right? All right, onwards, next box. What other trades are happening in the midseason? What's gonna happen? Uh, do you think, think there are gonna be a lot of trades, no trades? I guess Luis Castillo, Frankie Montas, a couple pitchers that teams would want. Oh, CJ Crone got hurt recently, so yeah, maybe maybe that that interrupt his interrupted his possibility of doing the home run derby. And the Yankees, sixty-four games, sixty-four wins that is, and I think they have the best the, the best run differential. They run differential plus one ninety-nine. Ooh, that NT filler sold out. Let me post the. Let me post that second one. Pots are we giving away? Eight. All right, so same deal with the last filler for uh, 2019 NT. The first one just sold out. And just so we don't lose any time for the promo, I just posted the last one. And then obviously that's the only one we got to do to unlock the promo. Still doing the same eight chrome hanger box spot giveaway in addition to the eight national treasure spots we're giving away. So a lot of giveaways hiding in that break. Let's see if that loaded correctly. It did. So go and get it. There's two full spots left. And then the last filler has 22 spots left. And then all we gotta do is that Panini one, well, one of the number blocks sold out already. We just need to sell out the other number block, which is cheaper than the one that sold out. And just one filler, and we can give away money tonight. That'd be awesome.
Chilo think your what? Your Royals are gonna make a dumb trade for Benintendi? Sure, they can get a get a decent haul for Andrew Benintendi. A lot of people would want need a like an Andrew Benintendi hitting in their lineup. Yeah, Wilson Contreras has to be gone, right? All right, 30 out of 75, Luis Urias for the Brew Crew. It'll be for Gary. And Frank Viola. Nice, Frank Viola going to the Twins. That'll be for Canard with the Twins. That's uh, 69 out of 199. 35 out of 100, Brandon Nemo, Mets, Chris Parent. by the Orioles right now on TV. Yeah, they, they have been playing some good baseball lately. Maybe the Padres make a run at Benintendi. I don't know if they're in the mix, but they always trade with the Padres. Is Who? Benintendi? That's yeah, I think he's going to be free at the end of the season, so they'll probably want to get, some, get something back from him. I don't think so. Yeah, I think maybe... I think they have Trent Grisham platooning out there in the after. They probably would want like a Andrew Benintendi out there, a little more consistent hitter that they can put towards the top of the lineup. And then have Machado and Tatis Jr. behind him. That'd be pretty nice. On the Royal side of things, well, you can probably get a couple, a prospect or two. Martin thinks Contreras gets moved Tuesday. We play at home Monday, Monday night. So maybe he gets a start at the DH. Fans can give him a little send off. All right, next box. Good luck, everybody. Remember, all card chip, and I'll do a quick little recap at the end of the break as well. If you're re-watching the video, you've gotten this far, you can fast forward to the end if you want to. If you're watching live, stuck with me. And there's your autograph. Speaking of the Royals, there's Brad Keller. That is Chad with the Royals drawing first blood in that trade. They drew first blood. Rambo. And we got 15 out of 99, Roger Maris. Roger Maris, Yankees, Gary with the Bronx Bombers. One twenty one out of one ninety nine, Salvador Perez for the Royals for Chad.
Man. More the merrier. They sure do, Grant. By the way, uh, they I think they just announced the rule yesterday that if the uh, if this All Star game were to end in a tie, that it would be the the winner will be decided by home run derby. So there's a good chance that that could happen. We're bottom of the seventh. Nationals only Nationals NL only down a run. Let's go. Let's see what we got. And we got a Phillies autograph. That's Greg Lezinski. Is Harry here? Harry, tell me your favorite story about Greg Lezinski. This is uh, Peter and the Phillies with this one. Now, Harry remembers the bull. Hey, he looks like a big guy. You're a big guy for you. Remember Bane in the plane? For you. 002 out of 199, Matthew Boyd. Are the mantle refractors on this? Did, we, did I pass one? Is that why you're saying that, Rex? Sixto Sanchez. All cards, Shiv. You'll get everything, folks. Sixto Sanchez, one out of 50. Orange wave for the Marlins, Chad Doc. Ryan Mountcastle, rookie refractor for Peter and the O's. The Orioles. They should do a home run derby, but make the pitchers hit. Well, it's possible, Gilo, because I think the managers get to pick who hits in the uh, in the if the game is tied, home run derby. So maybe for funsies, a manager could could be like, hey, Clayton, you want to go out there, take some cuts? He's a decent hitting pitcher. All right, we are halfway through this hobby case, ladies and gentlemen. Almost there. Oh, did they already pick the players? In the event of a tie? Oh, okay. Who are they? Oh, Ty France and Julio Rodriguez are the home run derby guys. They're they really going to put Julio Rodriguez back out there? He's a young guy. He can handle it, right? What about the NL? Speaking of Ty France, he's up to bat right now. Oh, it's three for team. Gotcha. 
You'd like to see a fan home run derby with fans go out there? No thanks. I'd like to see world-class athletes hitting bombs, not fans flailing at batting practice pitches. Twenty-seven out of seventy. We've got Mike Cameron. And your autograph is Jose Garcia, rookie auto for the Red Legs. And that goes to Martin and the Red Legs. Me too, Joe. I, I'd like to see this game get tied up and then go to a home run derby. I'd like to see how that format, like on paper, it sounds like a cool idea. Steelers fan, sure is. Once it sells out, we'll do it. Still have a couple fillers to go on that. Forty nine out of one ninety nine, Larry Walker. Yeah, I think it should be entertaining, right? To see a home run derby to decide a tie game in a all star game. So hopefully hopefully we'll be able to see that. Oh, yeah, Martin saying out in London. Yeah, don't get the fans involved. We saw Home Run Derby X with the influencers, and three of the four were just awful. I don't think so, Grant. I feel like I've noticed some Babe Ruth base cards, but no refractors for Babe Ruth or, or, or the Mick. They should make a derby happen to extra innings for normal games. It's funny you should mention that, G-Lo, because, uh, uh, because Rob Manfred specifically said they won't be doing it for, they're not considering it for any regular season games. The only thing I don't like is how often they keep changing the baseball rules. Like what? Man, if you, if you don't like that, you must hate the NFL. <laughs> They're, they're tinkering all the time. Maybe that's why we hate it. Martin, <laughs> it's on American. I mean, I don't think there's been that many rules changed. I think there was the Ghost Runners was just a holdover from from pandemic rules, and I think that's about it. I think all the other pandemic rules, most of them have been rolled back. I don't really, aside from the Ghost Runner rule, I feel like I don't remember another significant rule change. Although we might see one, they might ban the shift. That would be a pretty significant rule change. And we got Jared Weaver for the Halos. Kenneth with the Angels. It's the old Jared Weaver autograph. Fifty-two out of one ninety-nine. Oh, again, yeah, Universal D. That's a. I feel like that's been talked about for so long that 
that I guess I didn't really think of that one. Well, that's a big one. 118 out of 199, Yusai Kikuchi. That Beltre, yes. I think I top loaded, right? Because I think usually parallels out of 25 or under, I'll usually do that. Brandon Belt to 99. When I do the recap, we'll get to it. Are we close to filling these? Filling what? Yes. We're close to filling everything, technically. All right, four box to go. We're almost there. All right. Noted Kyle Seeger hater, Chad Dawes, saying, I love Jared Weaver. When he hit Kyle Seeger on purpose for being a douche, he became one of my favorite pitchers of all time. All right, let's go NL. Let's tie this up and let's see some home run derby. Let's see some home run derby to, to finish up the game. Almost there. We are at one hour, 24 minutes. Thanks everyone for hanging with me throughout this break. Looks like those promo breaks are, uh, are moving pretty nicely. I'm gonna have to take a quick five after this break, but but those promo breaks are, are, also are pretty short, pretty fun, and unlocks a bunch of break credit. Jack would love to stand in the batter's box to appreciate 103 mile per hour pitch go by. I know, 103 on the on the gun. That's crazy. Would you have the reaction time, Jack, to move out of the way if that uh, if that pitch kind of sailed a little close to your chin? I don't know if I trust myself on that. There's Dave Stewart. Nice Dave Stewart autograph for David with the extra spot that he won. Got randomized the A's. It's the Dave Stewart auto, 147 out of 150. <laughs> 60 out of 75, Hoyt Wilhelm. Remember Hoyt Wilhelm? Old White Sox going to David. Jake Arrieta to 100. Rick with the Cubs. One change I would make for is if they play the All-Star game with just, just the starters. Let the starters play the entire game. Let the starters play the entire game. Suggesting that you think that the players want to play the entire game? I feel like they don't. <laughs> I feel like they're like, I don't want to play the entire game. I I want to. I want to relax. Give me just. Give me just uh, an at bat or two, and let me sit down and relax the rest of the time. Maybe from a pitching machine, says Jack. I agree. Maybe I maybe I do that from a pitching machine too. Although to me, when I step into a batting cage, and I uh, if I step into a batting cage, 
and I see like medium fast at the batting cage, that looks like 100 miles per hour to me nowadays. That's right, play to the whistle, Harry. Play to the, I don't know why it said medical either, play to the whistle. Yeah, I, I think Rex said that the players are definitely the ones going, I don't want to play this entire game. I'm supposed to enjoy this time off. Like, they're not going to, for an exhibition game, and especially teams, teams too, would be like, no way. Clayton Kershaw is not throwing 100 pitches in an exhibition game. No way the teams would allow that too. Just more chances for players to get injured. Make an appearance, get in a batter two, get him out of the game as quickly as possible is what, what GMs around the league are saying. Just face an NCAA softball pitcher. That's what 100 miles power feels like. I feel like it's a lot easier to find a, a batting cage than than finding a, uh, a softball pitcher who's willing to throw, throw some pitches to me. How fast do the fast pitch goes? go? Yeah, I, ho I hope so, Tim. If it fills, I'll break it. Just got to sell out the full spots and the filler. So once we do those two things, we can make that happen. I'm sure it doesn't take too much time. I'm sure we can squeeze it in at some point. We finish off at, uh, we finish around 11 o'clock LA time. So we still have three hours to go in the stream. 79 out of 99, Tim Hudson. That's for Grant and the Braves. And there's the Jorge Soler to 70. Is it? Is that filler full too, Tim? Remember, there, there, there is a break where we there's, there's a giveaway. A giveaway break to give away the remaining spots in that break. If that's both of those are full, then yeah, we can do it tonight. It'll get on the schedule eventually. There's Rafael Devers to 100. That is for Joe Pizzle. Yes, I'm well aware of that, Martin. I think most of us are, right? I feel like that's a point that they make every time I watch like softball World Series or something like that. Well, I hope so, Drew. We still have to fill a few things. To get that to get that break credit break going. Close. I hope hopefully we don't leave break credit on the table tonight. That'd be a shame. A crying shame. Alright. Two boxes to go. Right, it's true. But yeah, the broadcasts I feel like always have like the velocity and then it'll be, then it'll have like, they'll do the conversion to, to, uh, to what it'd be if it was on the mound. Yeah, it's no joke. I could find, probably find a pitching machine, right? Be a little bit easier. Yeah, he's pretty good, Gilo. He's pretty good. I think maybe West Coast bias, I think, uh, kind of keeps him under the radar, which is kind of crazy. Although he is, the, I think, the runaway favorite for the AL Rookie of the Year. What's the last thing I bought with my Jaspies discount? I don't get a discount, Rex.
But last thing I bought, I think uh, a bunch of Star Wars boxes. Like Topps Chrome Star Wars or something like that. Or Topps Finest Star Wars or something, something like that. Six out of 75, Luis Camposano for the Padres. That's gonna go to Harry and the Friars. Burt Blylevin for the Twins. Yeah, no, I get I get paid way too much to get a discount, Rex. When you when you make the big bucks like me, they don't give you discounts. At least no one's giving it to me whenever whenever I buy something. Maybe I need to look into that, Rex. Thirty-nine out of one ninety-nine. Zach Gallon, Raymond, with the Diamondbacks. Maybe I should be getting a discount, Rex. Have I been, have I been shafted out of a discount the entire time? That's right. I gotta check my Jaspie's collective bargaining room. Collective bargaining agreement. Last box coming up. I, you know, I, no, I don't know offhand, Martin, but obviously the schedule for everything because of the pandemic has has messed up a lot of uh, a lot of the timeline for for product. So I have no idea when Optic Basketball is coming. Does any, anyone else know offhand? I've not been told of any any kind of discount, Rex. I suppose if I if I ask for one, I'm sure I would. I don't I don't really buy enough things regularly for that. I'm getting into golf, remember, Rex? So all all, all of that hobby money is, is going to golf. Although I might buy something at the National. I traditionally buy a box or two at the National. This break is longer than Wanto's contract he turned down? Nah, this is not that long. Actually, I might get this in under under an hour and 45 minutes. I thought it was going to take me two full hours. No, nah, nothing significant in those Star Wars boxes. I feel like I did get a couple out of five parallels of, you know, like some random scene in one of the animated shows, Clone Wars or something like that. And I think it was just like, you know, out of five, Yoda talks to Youngling or something like that. Yeah, traditionally I do, Rex. I, I try to I try to buy a box of something. I'll spend a couple hundred bucks on something. And another Frank Viola. Wish it was someone else because we already saw him. But twins are happy. Canard's happy. He's starting your Frank Viola PC. I don't know. I'll have to figure out what's what's been on what's been on sale. It's Paul O'Neill, thirty out of seventy. Ten out of one hundred, Cody Hewer for the White Sox, that'll be for David. Paul O'Neill, that'll be for Gary.
Dallas Braden. And that, my friends, there's Merrill Kelly right there, is that. You know, I don't Rex, but believe it or not, over the years, <laughs> I have like boxes and boxes of stuff. Like it's just, it's just kind of quietly built up over the, over the years. There's your recap right there. We got a bunch of parallels here too. I got a, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give them away in some breaks or something like that. I've got just too much stuff. Too much for me. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll dig some stuff out and give it away in breaks. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, a double header. We got another double header loaded up on jazbeescasebreaks.com if you want to check that out. A lot of fun stuff here. Maybe we'll see a little more variety in the autographs next time. Maybe some train whistle hits, but pretty solid here too. This is double header case break number two of 2021, Topps Chrome Platinum Anniversary Edition. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us, and I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.